Now that we've reviewed how to predict the sign of entropy changes for reactions, we will build up to how we calculate those values. To do this, we actually use the third law of thermodynamics. And yes, I know we're not going in numerical order, but it makes more sense, sense conceptually to go in this order. So our third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a perfectly ordered crystalline substance at zero Kelvin is zero. A couple of key things in here. One is we have to have a perfectly ordered crystalline substance. In the real world, a solid crystal will often have defects. Uh, atoms won't be exactly lined up where we predict. An atom will be missing. There will be an extra one. Um, and so they're rarely perfect in the real world. The other key thing is that we have to measure at zero Kelvin, which, by the way, has not yet been reached. So scientists have gotten really, really close, but uh, I don't remember the exact number. They're only down to 0 0.1 something Kelvin. So we haven't actually reached zero Kelvin yet. So when we say law, I actually put this in quotes because it's not a true law in the true sense of the word. But if we had a perfectly ordered crystalline substance and we could take it down to zero Kelvin, there would be zero entropy, meaning there would be no motion with that substance. The impact of this law of thermodynamics is that it allows us to actually measure. This is actually a wrong word here. I'm going to change this to measure. We don't calculate it. It allows us to measure a pure entropy value of a given substance. So realize this is different than enthalpy. With enthalpy, we only ever referred to changes in enthalpy. There was no way to measure just an H value for a substance. So the difference with entropy is that we can measure just a pure entropy value, and then we can use that to measure the change in entropy for a reaction. Once we look up our pure entropy values for substances, which we can find in Appendix G, there is a, an abbreviated table in 16.2 in the textbook, we see that, again, notice we have our standard notation here. It means we're measuring one mole of a pure substance, one atmosphere, 25 degrees Celsius. And we can use those pure molar entropy values in this equation to calculate the entropy of reaction. And hopefully this equation looks familiar. Notice we have the exact same setup as what we use to calculate the enthalpy of reaction. Same definition, same everything. The only difference is that we're using entropy values instead of our enthalpy of formation values. And so again, in two slides, we'll go through a sample calculation using this equation. Before we do that sample calculation, I wanted to just show this table from the textbook to illustrate the difference in physical states. So these are pure entropy values. This section here is showing our solids. Notice they're relatively low values. In fact, notice the value for diamond, how close to zero that is. Our values for liquids are next. Ooh, sorry. First time using that pen. That's kind of fun. Um, notice liquids in general tend to be higher. Notice it is possible to have a solid that is a higher value than a liquid. Right? So when I ask you to compare, I have to control variables on those. I have to control the physical states if I'm asking you to compare and predict values of entropies. And then on the right side over here, we have our gases. Ooh, again, a new tool over here. So that's our pen or pencil. Sorry. So notice the gases on the right side here tend to be very large values. Again, the smaller an atom or molecule, the smaller its entropy value, is possible to be smaller than some of our liquids or even solids. So just for reference, you do not need to memorize these. You will always be given them or you can look them up. Another very important note down here, the standard entropy for a pure element in its most stable form is not zero. So recognize that elements like aluminum in its standard state still has an entropy value. So enthalpy of formation values for substances in their elemental form 
those are zero for entropies that is not the case. All right, so moving on to our entropy of reaction calculation. We are gonna use our same combustion reaction that we used for enthalpy. So we already have it balanced here. But as always, I do want you to predict the sign of entropy first. And if you remember in our last video, this is where we actually predicted it to be pretty equal. They're all gases, we have the same moles on both sides, so there's really no clear evidence to know which way it should go. That actually will pro prove useful once we calculate our answer. To calculate it, we have to look up or be given values. So again, from Appendix G, we have these values. And so for this one, I'm gonna do the same setup that I did for enthalpy. I'm gonna put my products in brackets and then reactants in brackets and subtract the two. Since these are all positive values, entropy has to be positive. You can't ever have a negative value because of our third law. Signs are not as much of an issue, but it does make it easier to make sure we have the right setup. So I have my moles of CO2 times its value. I'm gonna add to that the two moles of H2O, again, in the gas form, so I make sure I'm looking up the right substance. And I'm gonna subtract from that my reactants. So one mole of the C2H4 times its value. And notice in this case that we do have a value for oxygen. Again, entropies can never be zero, so we will have a value of entropy for every substance. Again, I recommend doing the same type of thing we did for our enthalpy setup, and that is multiply and add all of your values for products and write that value down. So when I add up my products, I get 805.2. When I do the same for my reactants, I get, oh, I wrote the wrong value down. Correction here, my oxygen was a 205.2. Mixed up some of my numbers, sorry about that. Hope you caught that. Double checking my numbers in the calculator before I write them down. And for my reactants, I get an 834.9. My final answer for this entropy change for my reaction then comes out to be the 805.2 minus the 834.9, which is a negative 29.7. Because this equation again focuses on addition and subtraction, we're going by least decimal places. All of our given values go to one, so our answer will go to one decimal place. And again, we look at our units. So notice again, moles cancel. And so here I'm left with just units of joules per Kelvin. That would be our final answer for this reaction. Notice that that is actually pretty close to zero. And so it makes sense that our prediction was difficult. We couldn't distinctly tell whether it should be positive or negative. That is not a very large or small value.